Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'd like to give you guys an update on the summer bedding plants, also the um, the perennials that are planted out in this small border here, and also the two planters right next to the wall over there. So starting off, I'll start with the, uh, with the, the bedding plant uh, border. So this year has been quite a tricky one um, because it's been really wet. So what's been happening is a lot of plants have been going mouldy and that hasn't caused too many issues in this bed but that's been quite problematic for the uh, the two planters over there which I'll show you later on. In this bed the wet weather what it's done is it's caused most of the African marigolds either get eaten by slugs or all the, all the um, flowers have been going rotten. We've got a couple here which have been flowering quite nicely and as you can see they're going quite nice bushy plants. Lots of flower buds coming so if we have some dry weather we should actually have a quite nice display on that one but you can see in this one here if this is what most of them have been doing they've been kind of rotting off at the at the stem down there and you can see there it's just gone black and, and started to rot that's what's happened in most of the flowers and the other issue that we've had is the uh, nemesia here so you can see this is quite a healthy one that's flowering away what's been happening is the stems have been breaking off in the wind so you can see a lot of them are looking quite weak and they've stopped flowering and some of them are actually completely broken off and died they should all be about this size here but there's so many stems stems have broken off of them that most of them are now looking really small you can see over here this one's been flattened by the wind that one as well has got a damaged stem this one here has been quite well sheltered so it's actually quite a nice size and it's flowering quite well but all the other ones have been damaged by the wind so the, they haven't done too well this year unfortunately. I will show a picture now of what it looked like a few weeks ago though before the wind came and you can see they were flowering really nicely. It's just the same that we had those strong winds and these were quite badly damaged. So if I was to grow these again I think I'd probably put them in a much more sheltered position. Probably not in this border. Maybe somewhere else like the um, possibly the pots over there but certainly not in a windy spot so the other plants the the alisum here these have been flowering quite well they um some of them have gone over but uh, they what they tend to do is they repeat bloom quite well throughout the summer you can see the old seed heads there from the old flowers but these are quite often perennial so they should come through the winter and they'll flower quite well in spring they do tend to flower best in early summer towards late summer they just kind of flower sporadically so you can see here that some of the plants like this one some of the size it has a lot of seed heads and there's a few flowers here and there but they're not completely covered in flowers they tend to be covered in flowers in spring and then they have this sporadic kind of flowering like this for the rest of the summer but they've certainly grown quite well when i planted them they're all about this size so they've certainly bulked up quite nicely the other plants we've got in here are the um the begonias they've done a lot better than i was expecting i did know that they might be quite happy here because it's quite shady this spot um today at the moment it's about one half one in the afternoon you can see the sun doesn't get around here because this is north facing you can see the sun's just starting to come around the side here so it gets the afternoon sun and the morning sun but the midday sun it doesn't get so unfortunately it's a bit shady but the begonias don't seem to mind you can see they're really quite well there is some slug damage slugs is another problem we've had because it's been such a wet summer the slugs and the snails have been active almost every single day they've been causing a lot of, of damage so that's why there's a lot of slug damage on that one this one as well I'm not sure what's wrong with this one it doesn't seem to be slug damage but it's not done as well but the other plants have got quite a decent size and they're looking quite happy and you can see the slug damage at this end is really bad with these marigolds they've been completely eaten off this one as well and they're basically just died now because there's been too much slug damage and you can see over here some examples of the leaves where they've been eaten off by the slugs so the wet weather and you can see there that that one is looking a bit ropey starting to rot a little bit it's because the weather's been so wet so that's the um the, the bedding border anyway it's not been the biggest success this summer uh, it's late august now so this the, the days will be getting colder um because here in scotland the, the summer really kind of finishes at the end of august you don't have much warm weather in september but hopefully these will keep going as long as the frost stays at bay um, the frost will kill most of these apart from the allison and also this they can take a light frost a hard frost this will probably be killed off but this will survive most winters if it doesn't get too wet and this is the verbena bonamensis this variety is a lollipop variety so it's actually a lot shorter than the normal one i was hoping to get a slightly taller one but this one looks quite good actually this only grows about two foot it should be all flowering really late in the year so september october uh, but this year everything's doing quite early because it's been although it's been very wet this summer it's been very mild so 
We haven't had it much below 15 during the night, which is quite unusual. Normally it's about 10 degrees or 8 degrees at night during the Scottish summer, um, but it's been about 15. So it's been quite a warm, humid summer. Um, maximum temperatures haven't been that warm, but with it being cloudy and with it raining every single day, that's why we've had a lot of problems with things rotting and dying off. But this one's doing quite well. And the one at the end here is doing particularly well, flowering nicely, which is quite surprising because these actually like a lot of sunshine. So it's good to see these flowering so well. And these normally flower in Scotland until the first frosts. I don't know if these will flower quite that long because they've, they've started a lot earlier than normal, but it'll be interesting to see. It would be good if these do continue right through to the autumn. So coming around here to the perennial bed, um, I planted this up with lots of perennials, I think it was kind of March or April. So there's been flowers pretty much, um, I think from, from April or May right into to now and we're just getting to the latest flowers now so these are the gladioli they're a lot bigger than I was expecting these must be giant varieties that I planted and because of that two or three of them I've had to cut off because they were actually snapped but you can see here the other ones are flowering quite nice and I've put a bamboo cane up with some string to protect them they've got some really nice vibrant colors a few different types I think there seems to be there might be a third colour as well, but I don't think that's in flower at the moment. I think that one of the ones that broke off is a slightly different colour. But you can see here, you've got these nice kind of burgundy or purple colours. Kind of like a pale lilac or uh, bluey purple. And so they've been doing quite well. I say the wind really has knocked them over in the last few weeks because we've had some strong windy weather. But apart from that, they've been doing quite well. And uh, you can see there's a few more stems coming up. So the, the flowering period for these, these did start flowering probably almost a month ago about the beginning of August so maybe three weeks ago these started flowering and it looks like they've probably got at least another month to go so these would give a lot of colour so these are done quite well coming around here you've got the Litartarus which is all around the front here but these aren't, other ones aren't quite in flower yet this is the first one to come into flower you can see it's got these lovely uh, pink frilly flowers and it's this is a bit unusual because most plants what they tend to do if they have a flower spike they will actually flower um, the, the first flowers will start at the bottom of the flower spike and then new ones open as it goes up this does it the opposite way around the new flowers the, the, the first flowers start at the top and then they die off and then its flowers kind of go down which is a bit odd and usual as I say normally it starts flowering at the bottom works its way up and then the tartarus it starts at the top and works its way down so this one's just starting to flower this whole column should become like this top bit section here and it should be really nice and vibrant there's also lots of other ones here. This one had a, a damaged stem, so that's why it's kind of branched. This one here, though, you can see lots of flowers coming on it. And these as well, some of them are even taller. So they've done really well. And they're not, as I say, they're only just starting to come into flower now. They should do well over the, the rest of the summer. This one in particular has done really well. This one's kind of branched into three stems, and uh, each stem is particularly big, so this one's done really well. And this again, probably got a bit of wind damage, so that's why this one's branching. And the two at the end here did get snapped off, as did that third one there. So that they're probably not going to flower this year, unfortunately. But these other ones have done well. Um, so as long as the wind doesn't blow them over from now on, uh, it should be a really good display. And these are just coming into flower. These are probably going to last the whole of September, possibly into October. So it'll be nice to see some more of these pink, pretty flowers coming out. And so this should look like this one here. And I'll hopefully give you guys an update when I can get these in full bloom. Coming around here, we've got the Hypericum. I cut back really hard. It is just starting to come into flower. I probably would remove this from the bed because it is a bit big for where it is. Uh, it could, if there was somewhere super in, the, in this garden, I would probably move it there because it's a little bit too big for this perennial border. But it's just coming into flower now. You see, this this stem, for example, has one big flower on it already, but it's probably got about another six or seven coming on it. And same with most of the other stems here. And they're just starting to come into flower. Each stem should have about six or seven flowers. And this normally flowers for quite a long time. So this should flower the whole of September as well. Normally this would be flowering in August and just be finishing now. But um, because I cut it really hard this year, harder than normal, it's been a bit later in flowering. So this will flower quite late. So we'll have quite a late display on this. And then coming around to the, um, the lilies here, they're actually finished now, but the plants are looking healthy. So it's looking good that they'll come up next year. And we've got this small one under here which is a bit smothered so that one might not grow as quite as well next year because it's not getting enough light at the moment to put into its bulb what tends to happen is the flowering um, of the of the lilies depends a lot on the previous year 
So if, it, if like, so for example, if this year is really good, they get a lot of energy put down to the bulbs, that bulb will have loads of energy to grow next year, get a good head start and should flower better. But it does also depend on how good the current year is, but it's, it seems to be very dependent on the year prior to how much energy gets into its bulb and how well it will flower. So that's it for this, um, this perennial border. As I say, it's done okay. The, um, the anemones have completely died off. I think I left a couple here. Uh, so the sticks. They, they die off in the summer. They won't come up again till probably February and they'll flower in March or April. So they should come up. They're quite hardy perennials. They normally come up no problem. And then there was a couple of these um, chrysanthemum snowlands, um, kind of oxide daisy looking plants here. These are just self-seeded. I've left them. They have become somewhat smothered. Um, but once the hypericums finish flowering and possibly the lutartimus, I'll cut them back, give these a bit more space. Because these, these just keep flowering normally until frost and I can probably collect some of the seeds and sell them elsewhere for next year. So finally we have the uh, two lollipop uh, granthemums here. They've been uh, suffering quite a bit because it's been really quite damp and um, very windy as well. So these, these had a few broken branches. See there's a bit of a gap around the side there. This one as well. I think it might have been a branch I had to remove because it got so windy. I, mean, I was worried that it was going to lose a lot more branches so I cut these back really hard. Um, they were quite big a while back. I'll, give, I'll show a photo of it to you now so you know what it looked like when these were both in full bloom. They did look really nice. Also the labili underneath looked good. And they were quite big plants and absolutely covered in flowers. So as you can see, they've shrunk down a bit now with the hard prune and they didn't flower for a little bit after that hard prune but you can see this one here is just starting to come back through absolutely covered in flower buds so this one should flower really well soon um, there's loads and loads of buds coming so I'm expecting this will be completely covered in flowers this one as well is this is a little bit further behind I did actually cut that one back about two or three weeks two or three weeks before I cut this one back this one was already a bit smaller didn't seem to have as many problems with the wind so this one's a bit further behind there is a lot of buds starting to come but again this will take a lot longer because it's been two or three weeks behind so this will hopefully look good towards the end of September this one will probably look at its best in a couple of weeks it's looking quite good already there is an interesting um, mutation here you see this quite often on plants I think it's called crenation it's when the growing tip of the plant becomes uh, elongated and flat instead of being round so normally you'd have a round growing tip around stem what happens is the, um, the growing tip becomes elongated and flat, it almost becomes 2D and you get these very long flat stems and then the flower as well, if it has a flower on it, it, um, it will become elongated and flat like that as well. So that's a, a semi-unusual mutation. I mean, out of the most mutations of plants, it's the most common. You'll see that quite, I have seen that quite often in plants. You can see there's another one down here as well, uh, given that strange, strange shape. And sometimes people select cuttings of cacti and things like this. To, um, just to have an unusual plant. So underneath we've got the lobelia. These have suffered the most in the wet weather. These were actually covered in mold and botrytis a few weeks ago because as I say we've had a really humid summer, um, not a lot of sunshine, not a lot of wind either which is quite unusual for Scotland. When we have had the wind it has been strong and it's damaged a few plants uh, but generally it's not been as windy as usual. It's been a lot of still days, very high humidity. As I say, it's been raining every single day for the last two months probably. So it's never really been allowed to dry out. So that's why a lot of this has got, um, got mold, died off. This one as well, you can see uh, it's a lot of it has died and a lot of it has become moldy just with it being constantly wet, constantly damp from this, this kind of weather we've been having. So I'll see how this does. Unfortunately, there's not a huge amount of time left in the growing season, so these won't trail right down the sides. I had hoped these lobelia would be trailing right down the sides of the pot. The, um, the one in my balcony has done really well. That's a bit more of a sunny position. These only get sun from midday until afternoon. My balcony gets the sun first thing in the morning, so it dries out and then it kind of stays dry all for the rest of the day. So we'll see how these do. The lobelia, they do actually seem to grow quite well in the cold weather uh, until the frost comes. So they should grow a little bit in September, October, but we don't have a much of the growing season left. So they won't be fast growing. They do, if you want them to grow fast, they do need quite high temperatures. So that's it for these two planters. Um, hopefully, let's say the the anthemums will be flowering quite well for the whole of September. 
Lobelia, we'll probably see um, a little bit more flowers from this once they recover from this horrible uh, damp spell we've had. Um, but we'll just, be, we'll just have to wait and see how they do. I'm not expecting them to do too great. You see, I ground them as are done well. And I'll give you guys an update hopefully of them in October.